Uh, speaking of El Clasico, let's look ahead, shall we, to Real Madrid against Barcelona. Um, tension in the dressing room, says the front page of Sport. This is, of course, after Gundogan criticised Araujo and the manner in which he got sent off in that big Champions League tie. Araujo hit back and said, look, I live by a code of ethics and I'm not going to say anything about it, but I don't feel this is right. Gundogan responded today to what Araujo had to say. Here he is. You know, that's um, how the most successful teams uh, develop, you know, and um, improve by communicating, you know, by uh, looking into each other's eyes, you know, and um, speaking um, for the benefit, you know, of every single person. But also at the end of the day, the ultimate target is for the benefit of the club, you know, because we are all here to make the, the club better, to bring the club in the best possible situation, you know, um, and to be successful. And I think uh, from day one that I'm here, um, everyone is aligned with that. Of course, uh, there are sometimes situations you know, where, have to, where, where you have to clear things. But uh, the intention from every single person in this club is very genuine towards, um, towards the success of this um, amazing club. And uh, that is just uh, to reach our potentials you know, and um, to try to, to, to win as much as possible. Uh, Ian, back with us. What's interesting, Craig, that he had that, that this interview was almost an opportunity to say, look, I, I shouldn't have come out and said it. I should have kept it within the dressing room. He hasn't. He's doubled down on it and said, look, I want to get this team better. And by doing this, this will help. No, I, and I completely disagree. Uh, by harnessing good team spirit is if you're going to have a disagreement or a bit of a scrap or be frustrated, you do it in the dressing room. You don't harness any team spirit in any sport by coming out when teammates make a mistake. And that's what it was. It was a mistake. It wasn't the worst decision in the world. He put himself in a difficult position, Ronald Arujo, with a bad pass. He then had a very, very quick player bearing down and go, what do you do? You don't want to have five seconds to go, oh, I'll phone a friend. You've got to, you got to make a decision. He tried to lean on him. He then tried to lean on him, hoping to put him off and, you know, gives away a... a it could have been a penalty and, and uh, he would have saved himself a sending off. Uh, but the referee decided it was a smidge outside the box and, uh, and he goes. So it's not the most egregious, poor decision I've ever seen. If he punched somebody or two-footed somebody or did something utterly stupid, then that's different. But he didn't, and for Ilkay Gundogan to come out and say, oh, this is just, the mo this is just stupid, it's cost us, is basically what he said. Mm -hmm. It's cost us. I, I think is completely the wrong avenue to go around because the best teams keep it tight-knit. When everybody makes mistakes, and everybody does, people miss chances, people give balls away in the middle of the park, goalkeepers don't come for crosses, and defenders make bad decisions. And when that happens, you keep it in here. That's how you foster. Do you hear Real Madrid doing that at the moment? They foster the spirit at Real Madrid with the injuries and the players they've lost, and they've got it together, and they're in the Champions League semi, they're going to win La Liga, probably, and they've done that not by airing all their dirty linen in public, and that's what he's done. This is a veteran. This is a guy who's won everything domestically. Surely he knows better. He does, but I think Ilkay Gundogan, and we have seen this from him before, because following first El Clásico this season, he was very adamant in how disappointed he was with the reaction, reaction or lack thereof inside the locker room, that he wanted to see disappointed players and, in fact, what he saw, guys that didn't seem to be as affected by the result, the outcome or the performance as they should have been. He said it back then. I imagine that he was asked specifically about the red card and he went with... Honesty is the best policy. I'm going to tell you exactly what I believe and disregarding those codes and ethical values mm -hmm. that Ronald Araujo is referring to. My problem with this, and you just mentioned he's a veteran, right? This is a locker room that, because of the way it is made up, you have the young guys and you have the much older guys, veteran guys. If indeed you're going to go after one of the young guys, and Ronald Araujo would be kind of the leader, one of the leaders of the young guys, then you also have to go after one of the veterans. And in this game, specifically, there is a very good example of that. When Vitinha is about to shoot the ball on target, ends up being a goal, Robert Lewandowski is the one player that can step out and actually close down the space, and he slow jogs it. He slow jogs into position to where maybe you can make an argument that he's making a challenge, but he really isn't. So if indeed you're going to make a, a, a statement in which you hang out Ron Araujo out there for everybody to criticize, you also have to then be sort of uh, an equal critical player and say, 
uh, what about Robert Lewandowski? Mm. And that's where you have a problem. Because you can't pick and choose who is it that you're going to criticize within the team. And that's why you don't begin this process. And, and if, you're, if you're Ilkay Gundogan, what are you gaining here in, in being as... I suppose we like it because we have something to talk about. Yeah. But as a team, what do you gain? That didn't resolve an issue on the day, and it hasn't, been, it hasn't resolved an issue during the season. The last thing I'll say about this, I think he's bringing this up because he's been seeing mistakes from Araujo, from Jules Koundé, and really all of the back line of Barcelona throughout the course of the season, and he's saying, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've been asked about it. I'm going to tell you what I think about it, and he didn't think enough in terms of what this, the impact could be in the locker room. Uh, we just uh, well, just one second. He uh, the, the the problem is is that he's frustrated, and I don't agree with the fact that that's the right way to do it because that frustration is not going to help airing that in public. But I don't think he re never mind frustrated. I, I, I get the feeling he doesn't respect them, and but right. it, he made the move. It was his choice. He wanted to go to yeah. Barcelona. Maybe he's getting a bit of sun in his back that he wasn't getting in Manchester. But he's certainly not getting the performances. And he's not playing... What's the sun got to do with anything? Well, when the football's not great, at least you're getting a bit of nice weather. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester, great football. Crap rain, weather. rain, rain all the time. Fish and chips, rain. <laughs> Dull and dreary. Barcelona, a bit frustrating. Nice beach, lovely sun in your back. However, and we were talking about this earlier when we did a live class, the build-up to the classical show, was... Did you ever hear him call out one of his Manchester City teammates in public? Mm. And I, maybe, I, I, you know, somebody can prove me wrong and bring him up. But if that was, you know, we talked about it, Vincent Company, a big, strong centre-half and a leader. Unless Vincent Company, and I don't remember this, ever went through his Man City career without making any mistakes, he never, ever called him up, did he? Mm. Never went to the press and said, well, Vincent Company's cost us this big game, Vincent Company's done this, or whoever it may be. He never did because he respected his teammates. And here I think he doesn't respect them, in my opinion, and he's also given them a lack of respect by saying this. Just before, just before I go to Ian, what should Xavi do, if anything? Not a lot he can do. What do you mean? To, to address this. Do, do you Chavi's drop him? Xavi's not giving us stuff. Xavi's gone. He's on, he's on the beach. He's on the beach. He's not Already. quite. He's he's got, got, on his back. One leg on the beach and he thought he'd one leg back at Barca. <laughs> <laughs> That's some long legs. They've got to be tight. There's got to be a siege mentality. And I think, you know, he's not going to win too many popularity contests contests with the other players. One or two have gone on Instagram and said, without naming him, look, we win and lose as a team. And that's right. Oh, Ian's all over Instagram. Oh, Loves the gram. What, there we he is. Out, what <laughs> if we call out bad internet? Has that not been a team player? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't go out and criticise the internet. <laughs> um, what sort of game are we expecting on Sunday? Oh, well, hopefully a good one. I mean, I, I, we talk about big games. I firmly believe this is the biggest club game on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one that travels the world globally. It's the biggest for me. I mean, people may argue about you know South America and different places, but. And there are some big games, but th th this is this is the one. It just it just feels like it's not quite hasn't quite had the anticipation this year because of Barcelona's season. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, until recently, well, it was a few weeks now, but Girona we had down as the nearest challengers, and they've taken a bit of a falter, and Barcelona have stepped up. So I, I'm I'm expecting I, I'm expecting an open game because what are Barcelona going to do? A draw is no good to them. Defeat certainly no good to them. So they've got to, in some sense, go to the Bernabeu and at least take it to this Real Madrid side. If you're going to go down in this, this season, and yeah. it looks like they are, go down fighting. And maybe we'll see that from them this weekend. Uh, let's take a look then at the predictions. How does everyone think this is going to go? Um, we heard Luis Garcia actually uh, earlier on today on our classical special say that he thought oh. it was going to be... <laughs> thought it was going to be a wait, Barcelona wait, wait. win. Craig, I thought, I thought Barcelona was <laughs> going to bring the right attitude they and are. mindset and all uh, of that. Uh, but, uh, you're going for Real Madrid victory as well? Well, yes, because uh, there's been some conversation as to what the mentality and, and the physicality of the midweek would do against... Real Madrid and I would say well I can make that same argument about Barcelona and if you have both teams that are struggling physically and mentally because of what happened in midweek I imagine that it's best to go with a team that is hey, hey yep. that is carrying positive momentum into this match and they have a unique opportunity Real Madrid does in delivering what I would consider to be the death blow for Barcelona given no chance 
No chance whatsoever. It'd be a great story. Maybe you're back in the title race. No, you're not. And we're going to do it here at home. That's a powerful position to be. I think Real Madrid will thrive in that powerful position and they beat Barcelona 2-1. Don't fret. Yes, sir? You've still got one more shot, at least, before this game kicks off. Yes. To get Luis Garcia to change his mind. Never in no. a million years. Never in a million years. I think you've got a chance. No, not a chance. Not a chance at all. You reckon? Uh, you reckon a draw, Ian? Yeah, I think so. Barcelona are unbeaten in 10 games in La Liga and they've not conceded, I think, in the last six games. It's kind of like Xavi's last stand, isn't it? Here, It's Barcelona's fight, really, to save the season. It's dead if they lose this. The big plus for Real Madrid, if they win this game, they go 11 points clear. They can rotate their squad around the semi-final with Bayern Munich. So that's perfect for them. But I think Barcelona, you know, I remember a couple of seasons ago when Real were on their way to the title and Barcelona came there and won 4-0. I think Aubameyang was kind of in a starring role that mm. day. So, it, you know, it seems longer ago, doesn't it? But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a hunt. You never know. As I always say predictions are, are there to make fools of us. But, yeah, I could see Barcelona getting the draw. Uh, for a lot more on El Clasico, we recorded a Clasico special along with Gemma Soler, Luis Garcia joins us as well, along with uh, Craig and Ali. An hour long. Yeah, full hour. Full hour. <laughs> you can check it out now. <laughs>